Welcome to An Evening with Kelly O'Neill. She's an ex-Navy chef and she's going to show you some culinary delights in the kitchen. Take it away, Kelly. Hi guys, how are you all doing? So tonight I'm going to be making a sausage roll Christmas wreath and I'm going to be doing some super easy microwave fudge. That's like ridiculously easy and really, really cheap to make. Um, each dish I'm making has got literally like two ingredients. So it's really quick, really cheap, really easy, but it's has maximum impact. Okay, so for the sausage roll Christmas wreath, you need puff pastry. Yes, it's pre-made because I haven't got four days spare to make puff pastry, so I buy it. And there's no shame in that, and it's only a quid. Other brands are available, then after you test goes. Um, is that what you do on the ship, Kelly? Is that what you do in the ship? Yeah, it, can, it comes in frozen, mainly. Um, we don't use puff pastry a lot because it is expensive. We do generally mm -hmm. make like short crust pastry, rough puff, mm -hmm. which is a quick and the easy version okay. of puff pastry, but it's not. Um, but yeah, we, we make the majority of the pastry, or we used to make the majority of the pastry on board, but we do occasionally buy in the puff pastry for cock and asses and things like that, special events. But um, yeah, for at the end of the day, I'm a single man. I work 30 hours a week. I ain't got time to be making pastry. I've mm -hmm. got patience for it anymore. So <laughs> I buy it. What's and a cock and ass, Kelly? Hey? What's a cock and ass? Cocktail party. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what you're going to need is 500 grams or thereabouts of sausage meat. Should I feed you don't, you don't have to, but you can buy packs of sausage meat, but if you can't find it, it's no big deal. It's really inexpensive. Just buy mm -hmm. a cheap pack of sausage. You can flavor it with anything you want. If you want to put sage in it, that's cool. Any like Christmassy spices, star anise, mace, anything like that, you can add those flavors in if you want to. But having really picky children who won't eat anything for me, I keep it simple, plain sausage. Just make sure you take the skins off because nobody wants sausage no. skin. No. It's not nice. So okay, plain so for the kids. Yeah. Plain for the kids, but it's probably best yeah, to flavour your sausage, isn't it? <laughs> best to yeah. flavour it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm making notes. I'm going to make notes because I'm going to make this. So um. <laughs> it is really, really easy. So 500 grams of sausage, take them out of the skin, squish it all together. If you do, if you don't like puff pastry because it can be quite fatty, you can use short crust pastry. Really easy to make. There's just Google it. Loads of easy recipes online. Just make sure you rest it in the fridge for 20 minutes before you use it. If you're buying the pre-rolled stuff, like me, because you're lazy, um, take it out of the fridge about 20 minutes before you need to use it because. It'll hard the, the fat in the pastry hardens when you try to roll it out, it'll, it'll crack and it's just it's harder to work with. So, puff pastry, leave in the fridge until last minute because that's a, a more delicate pastry and it gets soft really quickly and harder to work with. Short crust pastry, take it out beforehand. Okay, so under your pack of pastry. And what's great about these is they can pre-rolled in greaseproof paper. So again, you don't have to go out and buy extra stuff. It's all in the packet for you. And it just so happens to be the perfect width and length as well. Mm. <laughs> okay, so roll it all out. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sausage meat, pre-squished. Get in your hands, girl. Right. We have so, a question, Kelly. Okay. What's the what's the perfect length? Forty-five centimeters by thirty centimeters. Perfect. <laughs> so start to squish the sausage meat. Okay. Yep. Do you want it in a long sausage? Yep. Stick it in the middle. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> and squishing I'm sorry, it out. Giggly, I feel so immature, but it's just funny. Just squishing it's it out funny. to the ends, okay? Keeping it a nice, even width all the way along. 
yeah. not all the way to the ends because as we roll it, it's going to spread out a little bit. So leave yeah. about a centimetre either side, okay? Yeah. And don't worry if it's a bit lumpy and bumpy and a bit misshapen because as we roll it, shut up, Virgin. As It'll we get smoother. It, it leave and out, okay? So yeah. I'm just going to wash my hands quick. You getting all the skin off now, yeah? Okay. Say that again. No, Kelly. No, you get all the skin off your fingers. Yes, definitely. No skin on this, meet me. How many? No what? skin. No, no How many? skin. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do next is <coughs> need some egg wash, okay? This is going to be your glue to stick the pastry together. And I'm going to glaze it in and after so it's nice and golden brown when it cooks. A little tip with egg wash. If you notice when you first whisk an egg, it's really sort of gelatinous and stringy and gloopy. And it can be really, really hard to work with. Put a little bit of salt in and it'll break down the enzymes in the egg and make it much more watery and easy to work with, okay? What we're going to do, we're going to add of our puff pastry, just flick it off the grease. We have coat. another question, Kelly. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, another question. Where does the term sausage fingers come from? Sean. If you want, if you want to know who asked that, I will tell you. Again. I don't know. Could they answer me that? Because I'd love to know. Ah, interesting. Yes. Could you answer that in the chat? <laughs> So so Kelly, how long have you been out of the Navy? Oh, God. Long time. Too long. Uh, too long, yeah. About 15 years. Okay. About 14, how, 15 years. How, you, how, do, how are you finding the transition in? All right. I initially found it quite difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I left to marry a squaddy, as a lot of people who know me know that I sort of kind of swapped one service for the other. So it, it wasn't as a difficult transition leaving the military life behind. I still had mm. that aspect of my life. But yeah. I found adjusting to civilian working life quite different from what. No one what wants I to do. work as a civvy, do they? Hey? No one wants to work as a civvy, do they? No. And it's a completely sure. different work ethic. And I struggled with that because we're always told to get it done, get it done quickly, and do it well. Yes. Don't, to to don't come to me with problems, come to me with solutions type of attitude. Mm. Civvies that don't work that way and it's do as little as possible in the longest time possible and it's I found that really frustrating. I did a lot of job hopping for a while. Um, didn't help moving around being married to squad as well. Every 18 months I was having to finish work and move to an, another part of the country and start over. Yeah. But, um, I, I did find it difficult. I did have a service member who said it was easy. Because it's not. You're always trying to find something that measures up to it. And yeah. the reality is you're never going to. So I think the, the earlier you accept that, the easier you'll find it. So it's having that period of adjustment then, isn't it? Yeah. And I suppose that's where some struggle and some some day. Oh, thanks. Sorry, I just um, wanted to ask you, so I'll let you get back to your sausage meat. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so what we're going to do, rather than paint the flat side with the egg wash, we're going to do the edge here. So we're not going to have any overlap. No, not needed, okay? No. So literally just paint the egg wash along the edge. No. Don't use too much. We don't want salt. We don't want it soggy. As Paul Hollywood says, nobody likes a soggy bottle. Nope. Okay. Roll it over. You can use the grease spoon if you want to do, but you don't have to. Just until it sticks. You can already see we've got the super-sized sausage roll thing going yeah. on at the moment. Okay. It's quite nice and wide, that, isn't it? Yeah. We like the girth. Tip off the excess, okay? Get it as close as you can <coughs> to the edge we don't of want the to miss hole now. And lift that off and move it back a bit. We're going to use, we're not going to waste this extra bit. We're going to do some little decorations for it, okay? Perfect. Give it a little roll to even it all out, get any air bubbles out. Yes. Okay, that needs to be on the bottom. 
so it doesn't nice. open up when you're cooking it, okay? So for the spare bit here, I'm gonna do something really easy. I've got a star shape cutter. Oh, very come festive. Up with something to find my holly cutter anywhere. I think my kids have had it, can't find it. Dip it into flour so it doesn't stick to the pastry. And just cut some stars out. Lay them on the side because we're going to cut off the excess grease proof now because it's just too big mm. for the And we'll put these on last once it's all yeah, decorated. Once it's all cut out, we'll stick them on last. Just you don't have to, but it finishes it nicely. Mm. A bit like mince pies when you put stars on yeah. mince pies, isn't it? It's best yeah. of. I mean, a plain mince pie is okay, but a decorated one's even better, isn't it? Mm. Got prettier up a bit, you know what I mean? Exactly. Didn't have much of that in the Navy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have time. No. Right, so I'll just, I haven't cut many out, but, so we've got, yeah, we've got minimal it. waste. Minimal waste, yeah. okay? Right, where's the scissors? All right, so I'm just going to trim off the excess grease from paper because we don't need it all. That's great because it saves you having to worry about is it going to stick to the tray. Yeah. You've done it and then I'll go in the drawer and discover, like, pull off the last bit of roll it's not enough. It's all, yes. It already comes in the packet. It's made some Good. idea. So just trim off the excess. And get rid. Right, so here comes this. This bit is a little bit fiddly, but the good thing is because it's pastry, it's malleable. So even if you mess up, you can fix it. You've got good handling. Good handling skills, have I shown? Years of practice, <laughs> mate. Years of practice. You have very much. I've no okay. doubt married a squaddy. <laughs> right, and as you can see on the end, <laughs> we sit, we've we've. Got a bit of a, a gap, okay? Oh. <laughs> cut cut ah, it off. Bit of a flap. Cut it off so you can see the sausage meat flush in there, all right? So that either ends. Yep. Right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to move it down to the bottom because we, as we shape it, we're going to bring it up into the circle for the wreath. Make the wreath, okay? makes sense. Try and make sure your greaseproof paper is flat underneath because any creases will bake into the sausage roll as it comes up and it'd be a nightmare to get off. So just try and make sure it's nice and flat before you start cutting. What we're going to do, we're going to cut intervals along the sausage roll, but not cut all the way through. And you'll see why in a minute, okay? So we don't want them too big. And a bit of a tip, as, as you come out, I don't know if you can see that, but the sausage meat's come off on the end. Nice. Clean it off. Because what you don't always want... Always clean your tip, Kelly. Always clean your tip. Always clean your tip. So what you don't want, as you go back in again, you're going to leave the sausage meat and pastry and it's just going to look all messy and horrible and just, nobody wants that. Okay, so I'll just cut along here. And if you can see, I'm not cutting all the way through. Right, I can say, so yeah, yeah. I can see sections, yep, yeah, perfect. And the reason for that, because we'll be manipulating it into position in a minute. That's a good way of putting it. Stop <laughs> <laughs> so the first sausage into a ring. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to be manipulating it around into a ring shape. Okay, into your rusty stars. Don't cut them too wide either, okay? So when I when I first made this, I did sort of nice chunky wedges, and they were just they were too much. They were just too much. So I thought, no, okay. I practiced more and more, and I find don't do them too thin. You want them about probably about a centimeter ish there or so. Okay. In width, okay. Anything bigger is just. It's too much. My watering. And anything less is just a nightmare to manipulate. Okay. So you're ready for the manipulation now, fellas <laughs> and ladies. Just rinse my hands because I've got some sausage meat on them. Okay. <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going to start 
we're going to start to lift one end and turn it round. It's going to look odd, but bear with me, okay? So you have to be gentle at this point. Yeah. Huh? You have to be a bit more gentle at this point, otherwise you'll rip it. Yeah, this is the delicate yeah. bit. You don't want to tear the no. bits that you've, you've not Careful cut. with your ring, yeah. 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 Don't tear the ring, Kelly. Don't tear it. Don't want to tear, it. Don't want to tear your ring, because then you'll you have don't to want to tear your ring. No. So I'm going to bring you a little bit closer and angle it down so you can see what I'm doing, because it is a bit fiddly. How's that? Is that okay? Yeah, I can see. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, great angle. What you do, you lift the first piece up like that, tilt it to the side, Open it out a little, so you've got a, a, a disc. Can you see that? Yeah. Yep. Got and it. Lift in the next one. Give it a little push, open it out again, and rest it just on the one above it. Mm, got it. Okay. Move it around as you go. So we're creating space, but we're still overlapping them at the same time. There we go. Work your way around. You can move this around as you go because it will open it up and space. Hey? Got good hands there. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Okay. Can you see it's starting to take shape? Like can you see it's starting to take shape? Yes. Yeah. Looking nice. good. Looking good. Okay. This is what I mean about puff pastry. It's a lot softer than short crust. So you don't want to take this out of the fridge in advance because it will be a nightmare to work with. You won't get this with short crust pastry. It's a lot firmer. It is easier to work with, but nice. not as nice, is it? Like I don't know. I don't know. Everyone likes a bit of puff pastry, don't they? Proper sausage rolls of puff pastry, isn't it? Yeah, but absolutely. As you've cut it, it flattens it down a little. Literally, just grab it and pull it apart again. Give it a little twist, lay it down, okay? Instead of trying to work around your sausage roll wreath, turn, turn, just turn the paper. I know it sounds really stupid, but you'd be surprised how many people have watched do this, and they're trying to do this around it. You like to turn it around. Yeah. No, <laughs> it. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. So it's starting to take the, the round wreath shape now, okay? Yeah. You want a nice overlap, good. but you don't want them packed so tightly that they're going to take longer to cook, okay? You want the hot air to get in between each <clears throat> sliver so it okay. cooks evenly and cooks more quickly, okay? Nearly there, nearly there. Around we go. Oh, that, that ring looks a bit big. Hey? The ring looks a bit big. Not that big. <laughs> well used. I'm keeping it nice and tight, all right? There we Try go. Try your best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Once you've got the, the, the basic shape, <laughs> you can then tweak it so you get you get a nice, more of a perfect round shape. And the, oh, idea is, the idea is you shouldn't be able to really see where the two ends meet, okay? Yeah. That's where the overlapping comes in. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Just gonna trim the extra bits off here again. Oops. And then we're just gonna egg wash over the pastry. Try not to get it on the sausage meat because it'll make it go all shiny. It's, it's purely a presentation thing. It's not gonna affect the flavor. Just but to make that golden brown, isn't it? Yeah. Make sure you get right in on the inside. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not too much, guys, okay? We, we don't want to make it soggy. We just want, like, a glaze we'll on make... it. There are some they instances where too wet, that wet is too wet, okay? So take it easy. And you end up bingo all over the place. I knew I should. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Sean. Oh, I think it's Sean. Yeah. 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 Like, what you know have what I done? It's, it's Sean. Can... Since he got his bum <laughs> out on camera, no. he's just I know, yeah. it's cost, sent cost him to the bottom one. Carly just wanted to talk to me. <laughs>
<laughs> Kelly, can we can we get a, a close you. up of your ring there so we can see it a bit better? I'll show you a close up of my ring in a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit not smell of vision is delicious. <laughs> of your ring. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. So enter the little decorations you cut out. Start where your seam is, where the two ends meet. So you cover it and disguise it, okay? And then just place them around. Oh, just to make it look pretty. It's a bit more Christmassy, isn't it? A bit more Christmassy. A bit more Christmassy. Nothing. There's nothing wrong with decorating your ring. It's dark side in, hello. <gasps> right, okay. Um, we've got a question, Kelly. What's a puckered starfish? <laughs> a rusty mullet hole. Does that, does that answer your question? <laughs> no, you're going to have to explain, being the non-Navy person myself. It's, um, it's not it's not for green TV, green TV viewing, in all honesty. And um, make sure you then you brush over the stars with the egg wash. If uh, make sure you stick the edges down as well, okay? Because as puff pastry cooks, it shrinks in a little bit as the moisture escapes, and the edges will curl up. So make sure you stick the edges of the star down, okay? Right, hang on. <laughs> Can everybody see that? Yes. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. So if you're not happy with the shape Perfect. of things, just give it a bit of squish. A bit of a zhuzh. Okay. That's you what get she said. Right. Oh, right. Let me put you back there. Is that okay? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Carefully, carefully lift it either side. Keep it tall. Pop it on your baking tray. And that goes into, so if you've got a fan assisted oven, you want it about 180 degrees. If you've got a non fan assisted, it needs to be at 200 degrees. And I think, think that's gas mark six, but double check it because who has gas mark six and stuff anymore? Anybody? <laughs> no, no. I think it's six. Just banging it in the oven. People in, okay. people in Wales, apparently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not laughing. <laughs> anyway, in it goes. It'll take about 20 to 30 minutes, roughly, depending on how powerful your oven is and where you've put it in the oven. Try and keep it in the same heat. Your father sister doesn't necessarily make a difference. It does sometimes. I've got a new oven and it's, it's lethal. So I've got to put mine on a lower setting for a shorter time because it'll just incinerate it, everything. So if you know your ovens, you know roughly how long things take to bake, okay? So it's roughly 20 about to 30 minutes. Months. What? About nine that... months. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right, let me get rid of this. Why I'm saying we're going to do a cheeky little dip to go in the middle with um, cranberry sauce and mulled wine, okay? Mm. No, or if you don't like mulled wine. Mulled wine, right? It's Christmas. Can't be done, isn't it? Okay, so. So, so. If you read again, dudes, I'm not a chef anymore, right? And I, I'll be honest with you, I can't be asked half the time. So if it, whatever's easiest for me, I do. So that means cheating, Okay. So instead of buying fresh cranberries and cooking them down and all this, no. <laughs> Buy a jar of cranberry sauce. Okay, so that's cheap. Chuck it in your sauce Get it all in there. If you want it to be like a bit more posh, you could keep a couple of tablespoons in this bag and you could put a, paint it on your pastry before you put the sausage meat on. So you've got like cranberry sauce and sausage meat together. You can also like caramelize some onions if you're feeling extra special. Chuck them in there, the Branston, the mustard, anything that takes you fancy, you can tart it up. All right, but can't be bothered. Okay. So, 
So right. Kelly, so we're doing this, obviously we're doing this cooking show for the vets, for Green TV and anybody else who'd like to watch it. Yeah. What advice would you give to Oops. future, not just females, at males as well, but you could aim this at females as you've got first-hand experience, going into the Navy as a chef, what advice would you give to your future, or younger self, should I say? Um... Don't be a chef. Yeah, don't be a chef. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you, I, I think, right, chef is one of those vocations that you, I think you've got to live and breathe it. You have to adore cooking. Okay. To be, to be a chef. It's not for the faint-hearted. It's long hours, it's hard work, it's unsociable hours. And you don't get a lot of fun for it. Yeah, you don't get a lot of thanks for it. It's rare. You, you mm -hmm. usually take more stick than you do somebody yeah. saying, oh my God, that was really nice. Thanks, that was like cracking scram. Nine times out of 10, it's like, ooh, what's up? It's, it's, you've got to have a really tough skin. I've got tough skin anyway, but sometimes I come off like an 18 hour day yeah. and I just feel like broken. <laughs> the only way I can describe it. It's, it can so be so- the fries then. What? Stop breaking the fries then. <laughs> once I broke the fryers, like once. So what do you think uh, is how do you think it differs cooking in the Navy from a not from a chef in you know, civilians? You know, you get chefs um, cooking for schools, you get them cooking for yeah. big, big restaurants. How's it, you know, differ other than the obvious? Um, I did have a couple of chefing jobs when I left. I was head chef in a pub for a, a local pub for a while. Um, you you get a better response, better feedback, uh, cooking as a civilian. People are far more open to giving you praise um, instead of constantly complaining. Oh. <laughs> I would say that's yeah. probably the biggest thing. I think I, I think a lot of Matt Law's squaddies, whatever forces they're in, they don't fully appreciate how difficult it is to work with what you're given. Yeah. The imagine. budget is just crazy. Yeah, it's about two, two per, about, is it 1.58 or something like that? Hey? 1.58 per person? 160, yeah. It was something like Ridiculous. that. It was back when I wow. was in It was crazy. And that's like three meals a day, you know? It's just yeah. insane. Wow. Right. Um, I understand. The, I think the quality of stuff as well. We don't get, we get given the lowest grade of everything. Yeah. And uh, we only get the highest grade of things when it's officers, dinners and stuff like that. And then you see a difference in the food. Cocking asses. Yeah, cocking yeah. asses, see? But, yeah. um, so I think yeah. if you don't sort of live and breathe food, it's a very difficult profession to stay in for any length of time. Add into the mix being in the forces and a girl, yeah, it can be difficult, but I, I mean, I joined at 17. I've always had a good sense of humour. I've always had thick skin. Every now and again, it did get to me a little bit, but I just go out in the lash and it all be forgiven and forgotten. That's just the way it works, I think. Do you think that's helped you in life now? Obviously, left the Navy. Oh, yeah. Do you think that's made you a tougher, stronger person? You know, Absolutely. that you can face. Ah, oh, well, that that's that that's good to know. We, we've had a message. What is Wednesday still Double Duff Day? <laughs> double That's Duff. A I've heard that before. <laughs> duff from Tuesday. It's <laughs> never Double Duff Day. And yeah. um, naval people, I, I know what that means now. So, <laughs> but, got yeah. fish Fridays, um, <laughs> steak Saturday. Chef Chef Saturday. Yeah, and on Kevin yeah. nights, they were always a winner. Very nice. And when you made fresh omelets as well, that that they were always a winner. But even if, <laughs> even if uh, we were alongside, if you couldn't be asked to do something, you'd say sorry. It's like, see, state's too rough. Fryers are off. Do you miss it? Yeah. Do you miss it at all, Kelly? Um, I think like with oh, everything, Audrey. as time goes, <laughs> yeah, I think as time goes by, you you do only remember the good stuff. You tend yeah. to filter out the bad things. Um. Or the bad things get turned into a joke right. and they don't seem so bad anymore. Um, some really, really tough times, Action's but I would friend. say the majority of my time in the Navy was was just outstanding. It, you, it can't, it does not compare to anything. Another life. 
never it's a totally will. different I'm life different yeah. breed of people and I got lifelong friends lifelong friends that I sp- still speak to now go and visit and and stuff like that I so saw occasionally think, occasionally <laughs> <laughs> God, <laughs> I live mind God yeah. Um, I must admit, doing the work with the veterans that I've been doing over the past couple of months, it is different. And you know, the, yeah. the banter, you know, if, if you're easily work. offended, if you're easily offended, then it's not for you. But not, no, um, if you not. can take a joke and have that, I think sarcasm is, I think it must yeah. <laughs> it was when you sign up, I think that must yeah. be a part of it. But yeah, but yeah, and it as is long a, as you know that ev- pretty life. much everything you say it gets twisted. <laughs> yeah like yeah everything it can be something <laughs> completely innocent and it will be twisted and as long yeah. as you yeah, but you, like you, it twisted. you literally have to think before you speak is that sean again I know. Yeah, that was... we're trying to have a serious conversation here sean <laughs> no, I, I, think <laughs> thing, I think the only thing i would change about my timing would probably i would have really really pushed the branch transfer because it wasn't the Navy I disliked, it was my job. Um, mm. I would have really pushed that out. Should have been a stoker. <sighs> I should have been a stoker. No. I spent more time on the stoker's mess than the rounds mess, to be fair. But yeah, maybe I should have. But no, yeah. I think um, I think I would have appreciated it for what it was a lot more. I think mm. I think your comfort zones when in the military become so wide, and and the edges become so blurred you don't fully appreciate what you're doing and what you've got. Mm. You just find reasons to complain about it and you don't fully appreciate it until you're out and you think, actually, look what you've done. I did have everything given to me. All the opportunities were there. I just didn't push myself for it. And I think that's probably my biggest regret is not trying harder. Because it is, it is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and I would recommend anybody give it a go, hundred percent. So what, what you're saying is you should have gone AT and gone snowing, snowboarding, and skiing. <laughs> yeah, and I joined at seventeen as well. Maybe, maybe that played a part. I was still a baby, so maybe if mm-hmm. I'd, maybe if I'd gone to college, done the uni thing, and then joined the navy, I would have appreciated it that much more for what it was. Should have gone Wafu. Nice. Should have been a Wafu. Wafu. Right. Should have been a Wafu. Yeah. Spider. Oh, how rude. <laughs> so we'll let you make okay. your fudge then now. We'll let you get back to your fudge. Okay. So cranberry sauce, open the jar, chuck it in the saucepan. Okay. So cranberry yeah. sauce. Okay. Cranberry sauce. Cranberry yeah. Sauce, yeah. You can buy fresh cranberries and cook them down if you want to do, but we've got time for that, you know? No. Jar. Smith. Okay. Um, <laughs> mulled wine. The best mulled wine, in my opinion, is Lidl's. Yes. Oh, it's so nice. Anyway, about four tablespoons. Chuck it in. Do it to taste. If you're not a fan of mulled wine, don't put it in. If you like it really boozy, put more in. So simple. Okay. Okay. Eat it up. Vodka. vodka in the cranberry sauce. <laughs> it's, it has to be more. It's Christmassy, isn't it? It's Christmas. It's, yeah, fun. you know, we're Christmasing it up. Yes, not normal food. If, not, food. if you want to be a heathen and do mayonnaise and mustard, knock yourself out, yeah. But this is about Christmas, so it's mulled wine and cranberry, right? So stop your bleating. <laughs> it's what it is. Okay. Ketchup, ketchup, mayonnaise, and your prawns, and you're done, love. That's it. Oh my god. See, this is where well, this is why I left, Gail. This is why I left. Right. I can see, Kelly. I can see. I can see it now. Okay, so we literally just bring she it to the point. I'll be telling you all off. <laughs> That's Come it, Gail. Say, say charge of them, Gail. Oh, I would. Oh, I would on my watch. <laughs> all we're doing is warming it through. All right. Give me two seconds. Back in them. Oh, one moment. <laughs> she got back in the gas meter. Was it causing the, the <laughs> veteran disappearing, <laughs> Jeff? <laughs> I think it's too easy, much. that's why. The fudge is too much. I don't know. 
Right, sorry about that. Go on to the the door. It was a Christmas parcel. <laughs> I know, it's it's typical. Nobody ever knocked my door. <laughs> parcel. Christmas parcel. Oh, sorry. Parcel. Somebody parcel. said Christmas asshole. <laughs> I've just swore. <laughs> We're recording. AD, you'll have to edit that out. Yeah, I will. I was repeating. I was repeating. So I purposely swearing. didn't say package because that would have been twisted. You can't win this. <laughs> can't win. Can't, can't. can't win. You know what I mean? Good package. <laughs> you won't believe what's in the messages, Kelly. This fudge packing and all sorts. So I can I'm imagine. Not, I'm not reading them out. I'm so glad that I haven't like got my laptop on so I can see all of that. I can literally see like four people and that. I'm good with that. Okay, so all we're going to do is bring to a simmer and let it take over nice on a, on a low heat, okay, until you're ready to serve it. One thing I'm going to say about the, the sausage roll wreath, if you want to serve it hot, do all the, the fancy bit, right, get it in its shape, ready to go, don't egg wash it, cover it in cling film and chuck it in the fridge until you're ready okay. to cook it and serve it hot, okay? Alternatively, you can, you can pre-cook it, again, make sure it's, re it's stone cold before you recover it and put it in the fridge because it'll sweat. Nobody wants sweaty pastry, that's just nasty, okay? So make sure it's like proper cold right. before you cover it, okay? <laughs> and you can serve it cold on a buffet, but if you want it hot, put it in the fridge before you egg wash it. Make sure it's covered in clean film so the pastry doesn't form a crust. Then when you're ready, chuck it on your baking tray, egg wash it in the oven, you can serve it hot. What I will say is when you do take it out of the oven, let it rest for at least five minutes to let it firm up a little bit because if when you try and remove it from the greaseproof paper, it may break apart. So just give it five right. minutes to settle and firm up a little bit before you try and transfer it. And be delicate with it, guys. The good thing is because of the shape of it, even if it does break apart, you can quite easily put it back together and nobody's going to know. Yeah. Right? Okay, so that's in the oven, that's in the hob. We'll do we'll do the fudge now then, okay? Mm -hmm. How tall are you, Kelly? How tall am I? Tall enough, mate. Yeah, just tall just, enough. Someone's just requested it. I am five foot. Four foot and a five foot. Five foot. What am I? Five foot three and three quarters. So you're short then. I'm tall um, enough. Okay? Vertically well, challenged. Is that unless you're short? That's vertically challenged. I'm the perfect height for some things. <laughs> Kelly, okay. Kelly, I'm five Mashing foot up. two. I'm five foot two, Kelly, and I'm very ah. well proportioned. I'm five foot two. <laughs> I'm very well proportioned. Well built, well built. <laughs> okay, Fudge, let me move you back there so you can see what we got going on here. Oh, perfect, right. perfect. Is that okay? Good angle. Yeah, perfect. Good angle. Yeah. Super. Super, super easy, okay? Two ingredients, chocolate and condensed milk. Buy cheap chocolate because it tastes nicer in fudge. Don't ask me why, okay, it just does. So like 200 gram bars in your local bloody happy shopper is a quid a yeah. bar, right? Again, condensed <coughs> milk. Don't be buying carnation, that's a ridiculous price. Oh, Look Kelly, didn't you start milk. again from the beginning? I've just come on now. Hi, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> All right. Here he is. You standing yeah. on your box? You standing on your <laughs> box? I'm not. Stop, stop it! <laughs> You're so horrible. Anyway, back to the fudge, okay? Come on. Right. Break your chocolate up into chunks. All individual pieces, okay? How much? 400 grams. So, two large chocolate bars, cheap chocolate bars, it's like two quid. Okay, one can of standard size condensed milk is 397 grams to be precise. Little again. Nice cheap one from Lidl, right? A quid. So three quid. Oh, Lidl's a whole can. And you're going to have a mountain of uh, fudge, okay? Break a chocolate up, chuck it in a microwavable bowl. And then pour the condensed milk straight over the top. Make sure you get it all out. I love this stuff, by the way. I can literally see it, sit there with a spoon. Oh my God, it's amazing. Right, get it all out. Oh my God, it's 
No, anyway. Okay. What we're going to do before we put it in the microwave, we're going to stir it all in and make sure that you coat in all the chocolate because when you microwave chocolate, it burns really easily. Mm -hmm. Burnt chocolate's not nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So make sure you coat all the chocolate in the condensed milk. So we're not leaving any exposed chocolate for it to burn, okay? Okay, let me get a spoon a second. Now, we'll get in nice, that'll do. Scrape all the excess off, because obviously we, we don't want to upset the balance of the ingredients. It's measured, way to measure for a reason. And it's not going to set if you start wasting stuff, okay? And then it's over to the microwave. I've got a really crap microwave. It's only like a 700 watt. It's really rubbish. So I've got to microwave mine for a little bit longer. But generally speaking, most people have like 800 watt-ish. And you're going to be doing three lots of 30 second bouts and stirring in between. Okay? Because I've got a rubbish microwave, I'll be doing it an extra once. Okay? Literally work it in. <coughs> Put it on for 30 seconds, and when it comes out, give it a stir, chuck it back in, another 30 seconds, wash, rinse, repeat. All right, and then... Oh, sorry, someone's asked, what if you don't have a microwave? Uh, get one. Or get one. Get one. <laughs> yeah. you, sh you should yeah. make... <laughs> microwave fudge. You can't, I suppose you could do you it, it on your house, can't you? The principle's still the same. But I think the, it's a different heating technique. Haven't tried it on half. Knock yourself out though, give it a go. Let me know if it works. But this is specifically my go fudge because it's super quick, okay? Does that answer your question? Not much is gonna happen in the first one. You may get a little bit of chocolate melting, but the first one's really sort of the prep, is the warm through, okay? Give it a stir. We've got another question. Do you have yeah. microwaves on board, presumably? No, I can't remember. Can't have one. That's yes, a good question. The steam oven. I thought there was no, steam oven. I ovens. genuinely can't remember. If we did, we only had one, and it was probably for heating up our own freaking dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I won't put it past you. Yeah. At, at meal time, so we always ate <laughs> after. Uh, apparently, it was in the NAFI flat. Apparently, it was in the NAFI flat. I don't know if I've said that right. Oh, gosh, yes, it was, wasn't it? I don't know if I said that right. NAFI flat. Unbelievable. Not a four in June, it wasn't. Fire to the coconut noodles. We're doing a noodle. Right, another 30 seconds. Tom Yam coconut noodles. Those noodles are divs, though, aren't they? You can get them in B&M, right? Yeah, can you? Yeah. Yeah, they're proper nice. Love right. noodles. Okay. <laughs> what I'd recommend you do before, Anna, before you start on the um, on the fudge bit, line yourself the tin. You don't want a big tin because you don't want skinny pieces of fudge. You know, you want chunky pieces of fudge. So that's probably about eight Indeed. by eight. Okay, fairly deep. You're gonna, you're gonna pack your fudge now. I'm going to pack the fudge in there, Sean. Pack it right in, nice and tight, mate. <laughs> right into the corners. Right? Right in there, boy. Another tip. Don't grease the pan. Don't line it with anything other than cling film. Cling film is, like, designed for this. Make sure you get it in all the corners, though, okay? And the easiest way to do that is literally blow on it. Blow it into the corners and then gently lay the edges over so it stays in place. Okay, that's what we're going to be packing our fudge into, Sean. Okay. Right. So that's another thing. I'm watching this place. carefully now. Kelly, that's what you need. I've never, I've never packed fudge right. before, so I don't know how to do it. Can you see that starting to melt? Bring it closer. Angle it down. I think Spider okay. wants you to put some of that in his gut. A bottle, <laughs> of, a bottle of crack in there. Isn't that sexy? Look at that. Oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, my God. Okay. Can you see it's starting to melt, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yep. can see that. You don't have to be gentle with it, okay? It can be as rough as you like. 
she said. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes. That is true. Right, so you see, see though, we've place. still got a ways to go with melting all that chocolate. Okay. There's still a few lumps, isn't there? Yeah, we've still got some uh, cocoa solids in there. So we're going to chuck it back in the microwave again. Okay. Chuck it back in. Another thing, always 30 seconds back so then you won't burn it, okay? Right, always 30 second bouts, you're not going to burn it then. <laughs> now this says to leave in the fridge overnight. I promise you now, it's ready in four hours. <laughs> and I know this because I'm impatient. <laughs> and I do check it and no. I do stick my finger in to see if it's set enough for me to eat it. And it is usually set within <laughs> four hours. But if you can mm. leave it overnight, leave it overnight. But um, one year... I was totally skint and I didn't know what to get my family. So I baked loads of little goody things and I made this fudge form and I made a um, white chocolate version with cherry flavouring as well. And it was banging, absolutely banging. You can flavour this with anything if you really want to. What? Finn, didn't say anything. Yes, he did. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> I think he said banging. Man, it, man it. banging. Bang, banging. Right. Banging. <laughs> Anyway, microwave pinged. But it makes a really, really good gift. If you're a cheap ass like me. You, you left your back door open. It's probably going back in in a minute. Like, didn't you hear the part that I got a really shit microwave? Right. I don't know if you can see now. Yeah, it's, okay. it's really starting to melt, all melt together. Yeah. Looks lush. At Beautiful. this stage, yeah. it, looks, it looks like it's separating, but it's not. It's fudgy fudgifying. It's fudgifying. Okay. Fudgifying. Fudgifying. Like it. Like it. Right? That's the new word. Fudgifying. I don't <laughs> think fudgifying's in the dictionary. But. <laughs> Ideally, guys, use a glass bowl because it holds the heat better. So as you're stirring, it's still heating and melting the chocolate. Because technically we're Beautiful. not cooking, we're just melting. And you'll be able to see this like still double a action. little huh? Something double said, action going on there. Double action. Bit of beating double, action. Double Bit of beating action. I know you're good at that. <laughs> Get it going. <laughs> right. Can you see now that's gone like really silky smooth? Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It looks like the topping of chocolate fudge cake. It does, yes. Oh. Fudgified. Mm. Okay. Fudgified. That is done. <laughs> You're just making it up now. And literally, all you need to do now is literally pack your fudge <laughs> into your. So before, dish. sorry, Kelly, to interrupt there. Before we get any fudge packing comments. I'd like to plug next week. We've got Neil, who is an <laughs> ex navy guy, doing a quiz. Cool. So, hope, yeah, something to all join in next. A week on Thursday, it is. So, what date is that, AD? Oh, uh, 21st. 21st. 21st on the 21st. Thursday. So, it's. 21st is a Monday, Stan. Yeah, it's the 21st. It's on the Monday, sorry. It's on the Monday. Sorry. Not Thursday. Oh, yeah, Thursday. It's Christmas Eve. We'll all be drunk by then. Um, so Monday sure. evening, Neil's doing a quiz, um, ex Navy. So that's going to be quite well, quite good fun that one. So tune into Wait. that and tell all your friends. Yeah, yeah bring some ale for that one. Yeah, what could definitely. Possibly go wrong. Yeah, what, I'm nothing, a little bit nervous about all. hosting that one. In all honesty, yeah. but I <laughs> will. Um, oh, it's yeah. I think when they all get drunk, it's going to be. Uh, even worse. <laughs> Don't even, listen, you listen, right? One tip I got for you: just roll with it. Don't fight just, it. Just, it, just roll with it. It's completely yeah. futile it's trying, to, trying to control and police these animals. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I, I had dealings with that with Sean last week. What's <laughs> this sober thing you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> What's this anyway. sober thing you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So all we want to do is, is press it into the corners as best you can. 
-hmm. with your fingers? It's, it is proper sticky, but what we'll do then is we'll literally drop it on the counter. This will do two things. It'll help level it out and get it into the corners properly for you. And it'll also get rid of any air bubbles because there's nothing worse than biting into a piece of fudge and there being like a hollow centre. Mm, bit oh. disappointing. Very disappointing. disappointing. Yeah. It's a bit like a Tinder date. Very disappointing. <laughs> okay. Give it back. A bit like scram on board, really. Can we boot him up? <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> I'm guessing that was Martin. <laughs> no, it's <Yes>, correct. <laughs> correct. Okay, so again, like, let this cool a little bit before you put it in the fridge, because what you don't want to do is bring down, um, bring up the temperature of your fridge and start messing with stuff in your fridge that's high risk. So we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Top shelf, guys. Okay. You know what I mean? Top shelf. <laughs> Top shelf. All the good spirits right. are. <laughs> you don't want to mix it with that's your what meat. She meant. <laughs> you don't want to mix it with your meats or your fish, okay? It's all right with veggies and stuff, so dairy, so top half of the fridge. But make sure it's plenty cool before it goes in. And cover it with cling film as well, because if you leave it exposed, it'll take on the taste of anything mm. that's strong smelling in the fridge. And it'll just totally mess with the fudge. And we, we don't want to mess with fudge, OK? So we'll do only beer in mind, so that's fine. <laughs> I'll go and grab a one I did earlier. And okay. Okay. See, we're, we're professional. Just... We're professional in green tea. Uh -huh. we, have, we have ones we've made earlier. See, blue professional. Beach, Outstanding. Look at this. Uh, See, here's one I made earlier. Can't beat it. Only a nice big knife. And it, it won't smell of fish or anything. So, so see, it's all wrapped. All wrapped. Okay. Just, just for the record, that's an average size knife with a small person. <laughs> Come here and say that. <laughs> I get I get it all the time, Kelly. I get it all the time. Can't I'm in so Greece. Guarantee you wouldn't say if you stood in front of me, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. as long as I was in front this of the is, door. This yeah. is where cling it's film does door. its magic, okay? Because not only does it leave you with a clean tin, it also leaves you with a nice smooth surface on your foot. That right. looks perfect. Looks like it's smooth, yeah. So oh, there's baby oil. Uh, you'll notice when you take it out, there's <laughs> more in that. <laughs> Carry on, Kelly. Go on. So, <laughs> you'll notice when you take Probably. it out and that the, the top of it will be smooth because it's sort of sealed off and dried out a little bit. The bottom and the sides are going to be tacky because it's been covered with cling film. Yeah. Right? It's the same as when you cut it in your, into your strips and cubes. <clears throat> Ideally, you want to space it out on the board you're cutting it on or put it on another tray, space the pieces out, cover them again and put them back in the fridge so all the edges dry and they won't stick back together, okay? Please <laughs> do not coat them in icing sugar. I will personally come and slap you across the face if you do that. Don't do Coats that. Everything in icing it, sugar now. Cut it, <laughs> let it dry naturally, okay? Don't use icing sugar. Okay. And all we do is literally cut it into sections. When it's, once you've cut it into the cubes and you've let it dry, they can go into little gift bags if you want, if you are making it for friends and family, and they won't stick together. If you try and rush it, then you're going to end up with just a mess. Okay? Yes, Mum. <laughs> there you go. You can send out fudge for Christmas now. Finger of fudge. Give it, give it to Just Stanley. Just another the of cheek, Mark. <clears throat> right, there you go. Stan. Yes, mate. Stanley. Yes, mate. Do you need any fudge packers? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> not anymore. All right, so I'll just show you a piece. Forty-two, my mess, wasn't it? Certainly was. <laughs> that beautiful, that Kelly. Smoothest. Yeah, it looks great. And honestly, God, it is Fabulous. the smoothest, creamiest fudge ever. you'll ever buy, ever. and it's cost you like three quid. 
Beautiful. Wow. Kelly. Yeah. Kelly. What? Could you put like hazelnuts in there or walnuts or stuff as well? Absolutely. Pistachio nuts I'd recommend on the top. So once you've chucked it in your tray. Rum? Right. If you want to put alcohol in. <laughs> no, you totally can. Uh, if you want to put alcohol in, keep it a maximum of two tablespoons and put it in your mix in the very beginning. Okay. And okay. then cook it through as normal as I've shown you there. White Perfect. chocolate. It's something to do with the fat content and the science behind it, I can't remember. But white chocolate technically isn't chocolate, it's fat, okay? Mm. So you need to add an extra 100 grams of white chocolate to the same quantity of condensed milk. Um, same with if you're flavoring it, you can chuck vanilla essence in, whatever flavoring you want. Chuck it all in at the beginning. Before, and we mix it all together and then cook it 30 second bounce uh, about as normal. Okay? Do we do it with Baileys as well? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, Baileys would be nice. Oh, yeah, good shout, mm. that. Yeah, that's a good shout. Yeah. Mm. I feel that. Mm. My God, it's well now. Or just, <laughs> just drink all the Baileys and the rum and forget the fudge. It's always that, isn't it? You can. Yeah, good point. Right, <laughs> I can. <laughs> I think it'll nearly be time for yeah, the, 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 the sausage roll. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, we're still on fudge. We're still on fudge. It's all right. We'll be doing the sausage reef in a minute. Huh? Yeah, we'll all go. We've pretty much cooked on that. <laughs> so if you want to leave something, it, a lot of people don't like mince pies. And whoever yeah, you are, it's a good old Whoever you are, and you it's can't good be like mince pies. And it's good if you've got kids. Kids are love, and it's something they can help you do as well, isn't it? I'm sorry, I'm it's so nice. it all. <laughs> it's nice. Anyway, chuck a bit of that on with them um, with a rum and coke. You know what I mean? Oh, perfect. You can leave that for Santa. He'd like that I rather mean, than mince pie yeah. and milk, wouldn't he? Yeah. yeah. I mean, actually, yeah, people who don't like mince pies, but like I said, we can't be friends if we don't like mince pies. <laughs> right, sausage roll reef. Yes. She's so aggressive. Perfect. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. Beautiful. Perfect. Stunning. Get that. Get that. that, that looks eh? Nice that, doesn't it, fellas? Mm. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Ladies. You just eat. Can you, can you just eat delivery that? Can you? Wow. Hey. Just eat delivery, that. Yeah, Uber Eats. Deliveroo. Uber Eats. Deliveroo. Greg's got nothing on me. Right, I don't know if you can see. You know, back in the beginning, I said puff pastry's got higher fat content, mm. which is why some people don't like it. It can make cooking a little bit more difficult because you get runoff. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. You see the runoff? Yeah. Quite fatty. You won't get that with short crust pastry, and you'll find it a lot easier to transfer once it's cooled a little bit. Like I said, it's, it's crucial, guys. Let it sit for at least five minutes, at least. And it will firm up a little bit, and I promise you, it'll be a lot easier to transfer. If you try and do it straight away, you're going to have a nightmare. Okay, so just so be patient. What you're saying is, when you, when you take it out, you've got to leave it for five minutes to let it firm up again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> so here's one I did, I did earlier. It is near as down there. Perfect dinner plate size. Ah, oh. nice. Okay. And it's got a cheap little ramp in. You can pick up you know, and home bargains that are like 50p or something. But they're really That's good. That's a Dorito sausage jar, isn't it? It's a ramekin dish, Sean. <laughs> oh, looks like it's got screwed top. Uh, it's so she's, off. she's gone all pop since she left the mob. <laughs> okay, it's a glass bowl, okay? <laughs> a small and jar. It fits. Look at that. Nice, snug little fit in there, look. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> the sauce you've had simmering. Okay? Look at the colour on that. Oh my god. 
Oh, I smells like white man. It's so good. I bet that smells amazing. It smells incredible. It smells like Christmas in my kitchen, man. It's amazing. Wow. So good. Well, after COVID, you can cook for us all. We'll all come down. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh my god, you're serious? No. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Or maybe just me, Kelly. Just me, Kelly. Just oh, me. all over it, Kelly. Uh, Bagsy first. Bagsy first. All right, no, just, just me and Kelly. <coughs> yeah, suck it, guys. There you go. That's what she said. Awesome. <laughs> oh. Look at that. Wow. Perfect. That's nice. beautiful. That. So that's that it. Oh, you can see. Yeah. The difference, it does, uh, in all honesty, guys, right, it does look nicer when it's hot. Mm. Mm. Right? That's a bit cold. But you, you get the idea. It's a bit Christmassy. It's something different for the table. But it's really good, actually, for um, Christmas Day evening. You know, like yeah. when you're still yeah. stuffed after Christmas yeah. dinner. Like buffet like, food, isn't it? Yeah, and you get like all your cold meats out, your cheeses and your crackers. That is like spot on, spot on for those kind of evenings and boxing day and stuff like that when you're just picking at stuff. And it'll keep in the fridge for three days. Okay, so don't get it'll last three, three days. days. It won't last three days. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Three yeah. Probably three days not. of nibbles. Perfect. Be lucky if it gets cold. I know, yeah. <laughs> I agree with that, mate. Awesome. Oh, Kelly, that was amazing. Thank you. Anybody got any questions before we wrap tonight's event up? Uh, clean questions. Sean, your band. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm talking about culinary <laughs> questions. No, nothing. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Through, so it must all be rude. It must all be rude comments. So there's obviously <laughs> nothing about your sausage roll week. Or your I think what telling. they're trying to do is make me blush. Good. It's not going to happen. I've had so many, too many years of this abuse. You're yeah. too thick skin. Exactly. <laughs> and that, yes. You've worked well done, Cal. Really well. Well. Oh. Congratulations, Cal. Yeah, awesome, Kelly. That was that, amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's really well good. Done. Yeah, really I, this way. I, I didn't know how to um, make fudge until tonight. So awesome stuff. How like. easy is that though? And it's literally it is, yeah. a minute and a half. Yeah. And in four hours, yeah. you're in fudge heaven. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. fudge, fudge heaven. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Like, I agree with that totally. As well. I remember when I first. Minute and a half, guys. That's all it is. Minute and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. See, Mini yeah, German, like bit yeah. of uphill gardening. Yeah. Jobs are good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when I first got told to make fudge? It was literally in a saucepan, and you you couldn't stop stirring it because the sugar would crystallize. Yeah. Just oh. took ages. Like mm. he did making fudge. He did making. How fudge. would you pack that fudge then, Cal? How would I pack it? Nice and tight, yeah. mate. Nice and tight. <laughs> <laughs> With a, with, a, with a few nuts on the side as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> add, your, add your nuts. <laughs> oh, I love the banter. Love that Brilliant stuff. Love it. Yeah. So, on that oh. note, on fudge and nuts, we've had a great <laughs> evening. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And, yes, join us Monday for some more veteran fun on Green TV. Awesome. Thanks ever so much, Kelly. Have a great Christmas, guys.